The news cracked down on painkiller prescriptions happening in about four months. Blue Cross Blue Shield announcing they will no longer cover OxyContin prescriptions as a way to try to make an impact on the opioid crisis. Instead, those prescriptions will be replaced with medications designed with a lower risk to be abused. Coverage changes happening January 1st, although those with cancer or end of life treatments will not be impacted. We had WHE 6 on your side reporter Laura Holm look into what your family needs to know about this right now. She joins us live in the studio with more. Mm -hmm. Well, these changes are broad and impact many different types of patients. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee telling me they developed these changes with an in with input from a statewide panel of independent medical experts. All of this is an effort to reduce the supply of opioids and limiting the potential for misuse and abuse. This is one third. Last month, we introduced you to Steve Glass. I am all but bedridden. He's been disabled for 27 years following a number of back surgeries. He has chronic and constant pain. These are the ones demonized the most. Mr. Glass's doctor prescribes him oxycodone and oxycotton. We're dying like the people that are overdosing, it's just slower. Starting January 1st, Blue Cross will no longer cover OxyContin. Instead, they're asking prescribers to replace it with extended release medications called Extamsa and Morphobond. So these two new products have some different mechanisms in place, different barriers that keep patients from hopefully abusing the medications. Pharmacist Josh Gass at Blue Drug explained how this change would impact chronic pain patients like glass. This change in Blue Cross Blue Shield's formulary doesn't um, keep you from getting the product or from the doctor prescribing it for you. They are just simply saying they will no longer cover it. That means paying for a prescription of OxyContin would be out of pocket. It can vary from a couple hundred to on up close to a thousand depending on how many we're getting. Included in the changes, there's a seven day cap for someone receiving an opiate like Percocet or another short acting opioid for the first time. And additional authorization is needed for extended use of short acting opioids within a 90 day window. However, Medicare and TenCare patients are not impacted in this. I believe this move to use these two new products can definitely help and aid um, with some of the opiate problems. I do, however, think that we can't limit our efforts with just formulary changes. It's going to take a, a, a variety of changes and implementations um, on all different levels of the healthcare process. Now, Blue Cross Blue Shield saying they're working on educating all their network providers about the changes. On top of that, I'm told they're also working with doctors on what's called a decision support tree, ensuring best practices are being followed when prescribing opioids. Ladies. Laura, thank you so much. And you may remember everyone July 1st, Tennessee enacting one of the most strict and aggressive opioid policies in the country. That's right. Governor Haslam's Tennessee Together legislation limits the duration and the dosage of opioid prescriptions. The plan focuses on three key areas, prevention, treatment, and law enforcement. Of course, we have more information about these changes for you on our website, WATE.com. Be sure to click on the As Seen On section.